We're now ready to start working on our code base and the way we're going to do this is to first create a prototype using the main big players in the project. The main big player in this project of course is Symphony Messenger and the parts which make up that are a message and a message handler. The reason why I'm going to start with a prototype is it just makes it a lot easier for your projects to succeed because if you can show the other developers, testers, uh, any stakeholders a working prototype then it's much easier to start splitting out tasks and to start showing how this can be tested, how it can be built. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. And so I'll start by creating a new branch, git checkout hyphen v and we'll call this part 3 because it is part 3 and we'll also give it a name so we'll call it prototype. Okay, so I'm now on branch part three forward slash prototype. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a notes file. But first, I'll just add that to git ignore. Uh, so this, even though we're not writing code here, this is kind of how I work. I'll tend to create myself a series of steps, a series of my own personal acceptance criteria. So I'll now create that notes file. So notes.txt. And then these are the steps that we're hopefully going to produce. And by completing these steps, then we'll have a pretty decent working prototype, which we can demonstrate to other interested parties. So let's talk through these steps. Uh, first thing we want to do is we want to be able to click buy or confirm and then have that handled somehow. So what I'll do is I'll create a controller which will handle that event. So uh, I'll call that stock transaction controller. And that is just going to be able to handle two different things. One will be able to handle buy and one will be able to handle sell. So we'll keep that nice and simple. And then once that action is performed, we need to create the appropriate records. We need to uh, deduct accounts. We need to maybe add to other accounts, things like that. And then we're on to the steps which are going to be performed in the background on our asynchronous transport. And that is to send a purchase confirmation notification email with an attached contract note. And even though that's sort of going to go off and happen in parallel asynchronously, I've sort of done these steps in order at the moment because... Uh, first off, we're going to keep things nice and simple and we're going to make get this working synchronously. Don't add any unneeded complexity while you're just creating a prototype to show how something works. Uh, our final step is just to display a success or confirmation page to the user. So that looks like quite a lot of work, but there's things in there that we can fake. For example, the confirmation page, we can just show any page after this step has happened or after this step has has happened and this part here is also something which we can fake we can sort of fake the data for now leaving us to be able to sort of concentrate mainly on this getting a messenger set up which consists of a message and a message handler the first thing that we're going to do is go and create that message so inside of the source folder i'm going to create another folder called message you don't have to call this but this is what it's called in the documentation and what you'll tend to find is that uh, when it's called a particular thing in documentation it kind of becomes a pseudo standard and you'll see it being called the same thing elsewhere in other code bases so let's keep life simple and we'll go with that and so what should we call this we'll name it after what is actually happening and so I'm going to go with the name Purchase Confirmation Notification. And the message class, really, all it does is it just holds the data which is needed in order to perform this action. In our case, the data that we'll need is the order. So we'll need information regarding the order and also information regarding the buyer, which you should be able to get off of that order because we're going to need to send an email notification to that buyer. So we'll create a constructor and obviously we don't have anything like entities or documents or anything like that yet, but we just know that this is going to be something which represents an order. So we'll create a private property. We'll just make it an object for the time being because we don't know what kind of class this is going to be and we'll call it order. And then I'm just going to create a getter for this. We'll say it's going to return an object and we'll return this order. 
And that is really it for the message. Again, the message just holds the data which is needed in order to complete this process. I'll go and commit these changes. So, so I've updated my git ignore and we've created this new file, uh, purchase confirmation notification. So git add all. And then git commit, so I'll go and copy this. Create purchase confirmation notification. That will do us. The next thing we need is a message handler, which will do the work for us. Before we go and create one of those, however, we're gonna to need to install Messenger. So, composer require Messenger. And so that will go and get me Messenger. Let's have a look at our Composer JSON file. So as you can see, that's been added there. And then inside of the source folder, I'm gonna create a new folder called Message Handler. And then we'll create a class. And this will just keep it to Purchase Confirmation Notification Handler. The first thing we need to do is to let the framework know that this is a message handler. So I'll show you two ways of doing this. The, we'll call it old school way, uh, because up until PHP 8, you would do it like this. So you would implement a message handler interface, like so. However, we now have PHP 8, so we can use attributes for this. And so I'm gonna remove that. And we're going to add an attribute at the top here as message handler, which means I can delete this. And it does the same thing. This marks this class as a message handler so that the framework knows to treat it as such. And this needs to be a callable. What is a callable? It's an object which can be called just like a function. The way to make a class into a callable one is to use the invoke magic method. So public function underscore underscore invoke. As a parameter for our invoke method, we use the purchase confirmation notification. And this way we'll have access to all the data that we need in order to perform our tasks. And this message handler knows which message it is intended to handle. Now, even though the work that this message handler is going to perform is going to be done asynchronously, there are two steps involved and those steps need to be done synchronously. What do I mean by that? Well, first off, we need to create a PDF and then we need to send the email. We cannot send the email before that PDF has been created. So even though this is gonna happen in the background asynchronously, those two steps need to happen synchronously. So let's go and comment what they are in the right order. Number one, create a PDF contract note. Number two, email the contract note to the buyer. There's probably quite a lot of work involved in both of these steps. However, at the moment, we're just focusing on creating a prototype, which we can demonstrate to others so that they can go away and maybe complete this work. So all we need to do here is just maybe echo something out, which will just give an indication of what is happening and in what order. So we're gonna echo creating a PDF contract note. I've added a line break here because this is gonna appear on a HTML page for the time being. And then for this next step, we'll echo emailing contract note to, and we actually have access to some data here, don't we? So we have the notification. Let's go back to our uh, notification message. So we have an order. And now we can start thinking about the relationships. We'll have an order which we should be able to access a buyer off that order. And then we should be able to access a buyer's email address off that order. So let's just go and write the code that we wish we had. So notification, we can get an order off there. Let's get a buyer off that order. And then let's get an email address off that buyer. And then again here, we're just gonna do a line break. So as well as having a prototype which we can demonstrate, we're also figuring out some of our data and some of the relationships between uh, that data, which should be able to give us a pretty good start or a pretty good idea of where we need to go. Let's go and commit this change. 
ticket status. Okay, so it's a bit of a bigger commit here because we pulled in Messenger. I'm happy with all that. So git add all, git commit. Add Messenger and create purchase confirmation notification handler. Okay, decent progress. Let's now go and create a controller where we can dispatch this message. And so inside of the controller folder, I'm going to create a controller called stock transaction controller. Okay, and so this is going to have just two methods. You can either be able to buy or you can either be able to sell. So we'll extend abstract controller. And we'll just go and mark out those two methods. And here we'll create a public function buy. This is going to return a response. So this will be symphony component HTTP foundation response. We'll mark it as a route. If I can spell route. And so the path will be buy. And we'll give it a name. Buy stock. Let's go and have a quick check of our notes and see what we're doing here. So we want to send a purchase confirmation notification email that is being handled by our message queue. But we need to somehow dispatch that. And the way that we're going to dispatch that is by using a message bus. And then what we'll need to do is display some kind of success or confirmation to the user. So let's go and mark out those steps. Dispatch confirmation message and display confirmation to the user. How do we dispatch a confirmation message? What we need is a message bus. And so here I'm going to inject message bus interface. And we'll simply just call that bus. And the way it works is like this. Bus dispatch new purchase confirmation notification and you'll see that this requires an order object where am i going to get one of those from for the time being we can just fake it by using anonymous classes let's go back to our purchase confirmation notification handler so we can see these relationships here let's just go and copy this and we'll go and paste it in a comment so that we know what we need to create here so this is all going to be just temporary code. However, what is the alternative? The alternative would be to build out an entire um, data structure with buyers and orders and all that stuff. Whereas really, we just want to get to something which is working as quickly as possible. There's no problem with writing temporary code as long as you're not creating pages and pages. This is just going to be a few lines which will actually point us in the right direction. And doing this little exercise here will can save you a lot of headaches long term because here you're sort of seeing how your application is going to work and you're figuring things out without having to really figure things out, if that makes sense. So I can say order equals new class. And then I want to be able to call get buyer off of that. So let's create a public function get buyer. This will also return an object. So again, return new class. And this will need a get email method. So let's just say email at example.tech. So hopefully you can see what I've done there. I've just made it possible for us to be able to mimic this relationship by using anonymous classes. And so now I can pass my order in here and it should just work. And so all I need to do now is display a confirmation to the user. So I'll go and create a twig file with just some very basic confirmation message. In order to do that, I'm gonna to need to pull in Twig. And so the way I'm gonna do that is not to pull in Twig directly, but I'm gonna pull in the debug bundle, which will give me the web profile and a load of other things, uh, which could be useful to me in the long run. So composer require debug, hit go. 
Okay, let's just go and have a quick look of what was pulled in there. So quite a lot of things. We've got monologue, debug bundle, uh, stopwatch, profiler pack, twig. So a lot of really cool, uh, useful development tools there. And we now have a templates folder with a base twig template. Let's go and create another folder. We'll call this stocks. And then inside of there, I'm going to create a twig file. We'll just call it example.html.twig. And then in here, I'm just going to drop a couple of simple lines in. So we're extending the base uh, html.twig file and then we're saying thanks, we've emailed your contract note. And that's all we need to see so that when we run this, we should see, if we go back to our confirmation notification handler, we should see this line getting echoed out to signal that we're creating a PDF contract note. We should see this to say that we're emailing it and then we should see thanks, we've emailed you your contract note. Back to the controller. And so here, all we need to say is this, render stocks example.html.twig. So you'll have seen that I had some auto completion there. Uh, that's because I'm using PHP Storm and I have the Symfony plugin enabled for this project. So if you're using PHP Storm, you go to PHP, you'll find Symfony there, and then just check this little box here. App directory should actually be source, so we might as well change that while we're here. Click apply, OK. And then before I go and commit these changes, let's actually see if they're working. So, uh, Symfony, I'm just going to start a development server. Symfony server colon start hyphen D to run it as a daemon in the background. We now have a server running. Let's go over to that. So, forward slash buy. And what I actually forgot to do was return this render. Okay, let's go and try that again. Okay, perfect. We're seeing the information that we expected to see. That's a pretty decent start because we've got our main players installed. We've installed Messenger. We've set up our message and our message handler. And so we've marked out our steps. At the moment, we're doing this synchronously, which is something that I'd advise in development keep things as simple as possible for as long as possible. A lot of people want to go straight to the most complex stuff, they'll start setting up transports and having things run asynchronously, and they'll think that that's the way to do it, to get the most complex stuff out of the way first. But the way I think that you should do it is to get a prototype working, because think about how we can work now. We can go and show this to our stakeholders, show this to the testers, the other developers, and we can start splitting out tasks. And it's much easier to work on a task when you can actually see how it fits in with the outside world. We can demo demonstrate this and then just give someone the task of creating that PDF contract note. They'll know exactly where it sits and what they need to create rather than just going off and creating some random standalone uh, artifact which they don't know how it fits in with the outside world. Now they do know how it fits in with the outside world as well as whoever has the task of creating the email. So all they need to do, they can see where it sits here and they could just start out by uh, putting a PDF, an example PDF in a folder, which they can just attach for the time being until the two steps can be married up. We have the controller, which has been created. And so the front end guys can go and create what they need to create there. And whoever has the task of coming up with a schema and handling the data, they've sort of already got a bit of a head start here. They can see where we're going and what data they're going to need and also the person who is in charge of making this asynchronous, the code is in place. They don't need to actually start touching the PHP code. Making this asynchronous is really all down to configuration. That's something we're gonna look at shortly. I hope you've managed to follow along and that you're having fun. Remember the pull requests are open. If you want to suggest any improvements or any additions to what we've worked on so far, let's move on. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. And also, if you're interested in my full-length courses, then make sure you check out my site at garyclark.tech. I'll leave a link on the screen and in the description.